In this video, we are learning to use estimations to check the reasonableness of our answers. Sometimes us teachers like to throw in some questions about estimation. And you might be thinking, what on earth do you mean by estimate? How do I do that? Do you just mean take a wild guess? No. Estimating is getting an answer which is approximate or close to the actual answer. It's going to be used as a guide. The reason why we use estimating is to check the reasonableness of our answer. If we're doing a tricky sum and we want to make sure that our answer is good and reasonable, one way we can check is by making an estimation. If we estimate and our actual answer is way off, we might need to try again. Estimation is a great way to check the reasonableness of our answers. To make an estimation, we first need to be confident in our ability to round. And rounding is pretty easy to do once you know how. Rounding means changing a number so that it is to the closest 10, 100, 1000, etc. Depends what we're trying to do. So it will end with the digit zero. Let's have a look at an example. I have this number, 46, and I'd like to round it to the nearest 10. So I'm going to underline my tens column. That's the one we need to decide if it's going to change or not. And to find this out, we look at the digits. So we go to the column to the right, just one to the right. So in that case, this is our units and it is a six. Now I need to decide if this digit is closer to the next 10 up or the 10 that we've got here. So I'm looking at this stack here and deciding if it's closer to zero or closer to 10. Now we need to remember if it is between zero and four, we go down. So we, we go down. We go down to zero. If it was a, if this was 44, it's closer to zero. If we have five or more, so between five and nine, we go up to the next 10. So if this was five, five is kind of the halfway point, but we count five as closer to the next 10 up than to zero. So we need to decide if it's closer to the next 10, so this is say, this might be the 10 we're going to, 46, one, two, three, four, five, six, six is between five and nine. And so we actually are going to round that up, which will then become 50. 50 is our rounded number. Let's try something a little bit different now. This time I want to round to the nearest hundred. And I'm going to have 224. So I've got 224 here. So I've got two hundreds, two tens, and four units. And I want to round to the nearest hundred. So I'm going to be deciding if I keep this two in the hundreds column or change that to a three. So I'm gonna underline that now because that's the one that I'm gonna decide if is changing or staying the same. So to decide if it's changing or staying the same, I look to the digit directly to the right. So I'm now looking at our tens column. Now I need to decide if this is going to go up or down. If this is close, if these two, ten if these tens here are closer to no tens or to 10 tens, because that's 100. Now two is between zero and four. 20 is closer to zero than to 100. And so this number, when I round it, is going to become 200. Let's try it without the blocks this time. And I'm going to round to the nearest thousand. So let's try this one. We've got 3,199. Now you might look at these nines and go, oh, does that mean we're going up? Let's check. So we are rounding to the nearest thousand. So I need to underline the thousands column. 
So that's this one here. This three in the thousands column is the one that I need to decide if it's changing or staying the same. So to do that, I look to the digit directly to the left. And you might be thinking, oh, but what about these nines here? We ignore them. We only look at this one here. It doesn't matter what these numbers are doing at all. We only look at this digit here. So I look to this one here. It is a one. So if it's between zero and four, we go down. If it's between five and nine, we go up. So it's a one is between zero and four. So we are gonna go down to 3,000 when we round it. Now, the reason why we use rounding is because it's a great way to check the reasonableness of our answer. We're probably not going to get the actual answer, but we're going to get close. Let's try this and see what it actually looks like. So I've got here two numbers and I'm going to add these together. So I've got 24, I've got two tens and four units, and I've got 38. And I want to add these together. Now I could do the calculation in my head, you know, I could uh, write them out like this and I could add them together and get my answer. Um, but I might do that in just a second. Right now, I want to check just about how much I'm gonna be going for because if I end up with tens or hundreds more or less, I know that I need to, I need to be double checking my working out. So let's round these numbers. It's very simple to do. So I'm gonna round both of these to the nearest 10 before I make my actual calculation. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna underline the two here. So this is the one I want to know if I'm changing or staying the same keeping the same. And I'm looking at the next digit to the right, which is a four. Four is between zero and four, so it goes down. So that becomes 20. And 38, I underline the three. This is the tens column. And I'm looking at the units column, the one directly to the right. That is eight. Eight is between five and nine. So this one is going up and becomes 40. Now, I'm adding 20 and 40, and I only really need to look at the first digit for each one, and I'll add the zero back in later when we're adding, I, and I've taken all, I just need to add the zero back. So I'm gonna, so two plus four is six, and then I need to add the zero, 60. So this is not my actual answer, this is an estimation. So this is gonna be close. So what that actually looks like when I put these together is that I have taken away those, and I've added an extra two units, to trade them in for that. And so my answer here is 60. One, two, three, four, five, 60. Okay. So now we can work it out for real. And let's just see how close the estimation is and if it's a reasonable answer. So I'm gonna use the MAB blocks here. So I'm gonna add these together. So I'm gonna add these units all together first. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13 units. I'm gonna swap this one out for a 10. And then I add the 10s together and my actual answer will be 64. So this estimation doesn't give me my exact answer. It gives me an approximate answer. So it's about correct. So the only difference here is it's only four. So that tells me that my calculation here is pretty good because it's pretty close. Okay, let's try again with some bigger numbers. Let's look at something a little bit trickier and we'll check the reasonableness of our calculations. So we've got 3,490 plus 9,812. Now, I could, again, write these out and do this, but I'm gonna estimate first, just to check when I go back and do my calculations that I'm getting close. So the first step I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna turn these into rounded numbers, nice round numbers. So to do that, I'm gonna look at the one in the thousands column. So I've got a three here and I wanna decide if this one is staying the same or changing. I'm looking at the next one over, it's a four, which is between zero and four. And so that goes down. So this becomes 3000. And this one is, so that we've got a nine here and I'm gonna decide if that's changing or staying the same. I've got an eight next to it. Eight's between five and nine, so it's going up. So now we've actually got 10,000. 
So we've gone from 9,000 to 10,000. Now, nice and quickly, I can add these two together. So 3,000 plus 10,000 or three plus 10, and then we'll add the th three zeros on later. Three plus 10 is 13, 13,000. So that's our approximate answer. Now we can work out our actual answer. Well, let's do that with standard notation. So 3,490 plus 9,812. So zero plus two is two, one plus nine is 10. Carry the one over there, put down the zero. Uh, five plus eight is three, carry uh, 13, carry the one over here. And then we've got four, so one plus three plus nine is 13. Okay, so now we've got a difference of 302, but because we're dealing with much larger numbers, that's actually okay. So I'm thinking that is pretty close. So this looks like my calculations have been pretty close as well. This is a reasonable answer to this one here. And there we have it. In this video, we have learned how to estimate using rounding to check the reasonableness of our answers.